Welcome to Football Anya. I think it's time we start our Euro 2020 build-up on Football Anya. And um, yeah, our, f our first sort of question um, video even um, about the tournament upcoming is who should be the main striker for the Netherlands at the tournament? Who are the options for the squad and who should be starting? Well, I'm Michael Statham and I'm with Mike Bell, the Football Anya editor, to discuss this issue. So, Mike, obviously this is a big, big issue for Wano Kuma now uh, to consider. He's got around about six, well, five, six months now to decide on who he's going to be his number one Netherlands striker. Memphis Depay is out injured and it's not looking likely that he'll make it back in time, is it? Uh, no, he's done his ACL, it looks like six months out. There's a slight chance that he could be back in time, but then he's risking his career and further injury if he even comes into the squad. I think Cummins already basically said that he wouldn't do that to him. Even if he comes back and says he's fit, he might just leave him out anyway just to prevent further injury because there's no way he can recover fully in that time um, from the injury that he's received, which is a massive blow for everyone's because he is the main attacker. He's been so crucial for, for Cummins since he's taken charge and yeah, he's such a threat. Um, for the Netherlands and other than possibly Frankie de Jong and Virgil van Dijk, he's the one player that you wouldn't want to have got injured, but sadly he has and yeah, it's a big blow. It's massive because he's a huge part of how the Netherlands play. He's that lone striker now and we never thought he'd be able to play that role, but he's been doing it like expertly well. Um, he used to be more of a winger or as a 10, but he was the one that would link all of the play together and was adapting really well to being a, being that target man in the box, crosses for through balls. He had the pace to beat defenders. So now you're looking at who are the alternatives. And um, there's a, an interesting array of strikers that I think the Netherlands would have been glad to have about a year, two years ago. Um, but yeah, they haven't been given that starting role by un, under Kuman, and that's where the concern lies. So we've got a, a list of strikers that we're going to go through, and it'd be interesting to get your opinion, Mike, and what you think of, of these. I've got the striker that I know I want to play at Euro 2020. It'd be interesting to hear who yours is too a little bit later. Um, but the two strikers that are currently in the Netherlands squad, um, mainly because of Daniel Marlon's injury, and I'm sure we'll come on to him later, but um, Wout Weghorst and Luke de Jong are the two sort of target man strikers in the squad. But I can't remember the last time either of those two has been given a start for the Netherlands national team. Are these two the natural successors to, 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 to Depay? And should Koeman change his system for either of those players to start games at the tournament? No, um, I'd rather see him stick to his formation he plays now, the, the fluid, pacey attack instead of going for a a target man like a uh, Luke de Jong, who did start recently in the last European qualifier against Estonia. He didn't score, he didn't really do much when he was on the field. Um, Luke de Jong, he's having a bad season for Sevilla. Um, he's not scoring goals, I think he's only scored two all season. He's been benched there. But he seems to be the one that Koeman trusts the most. I think he, uh, anything, he's an impact sub um, off the bench. If Netherlands aren't doing well, throw the big man up and um, try and get crosses into him. But it's just not the way that Netherlands have been playing under Koeman. It's not the way that I want to see them play. I don't want to play long balls forward. Um, I don't even think that the wingers are quick enough to play that system. Um, I don't think Promise, Bergus, Bergvain, you know, they're tricky wingers, but they're not blistering way fast. Um, I don't think they really suit, you know, route one football that you'd have to play with someone like Luke de Jong or even Balco of course, to... <coughs> Even though he's scoring more goals than Luke de Jong, it doesn't seem to be in Cummins' plans that much. I know he made in the last squad, but yeah, he definitely prefers Luke de Jong, um, who, to his credit, he's good in the air. Um, he played well against Northern Ireland in that game that Netherlands came back to win. But yeah, I'd rather not see either of these two starting for Netherlands because it is just a, a huge shift in information and tactic. A huge change in how they'll play, yeah. Yeah. Um... It's just a bit odd how you can have two strikers such as these two and in the squad, but then never play them. Like they, they come on as that sort of target man striker, and if that's the way it's got to stay, and yeah, Mike, I do agree with you that 
Koeman should stick with the system that's been working really well, that 4-2-3-1, with the pacey striker and wingers playing off them. Uh, I don't think Luke de Jong is prolific enough at all. We've seen that with Sevilla now. He's gone back to playing at a higher level than the Eredivisie, and it's still not really for him. He has really quiet games. He's brought off after an hour. Um, as for Vekos, he's scoring goals in the Bundesliga. But yeah, there's always been something just a little bit missing from his play. And uh, yeah, again, he doesn't fit into that current system that Koeman is, is using. The alternative then, surely, is Daniel Marlin, who's a very similar player to Depay in that striker's role, at least. Um, definitely plays off the shoulder for last defender. He's pacey. So, um, yeah, he's out injured, isn't he? And we don't really know how long he's out for at the minute either. Uh, no, it's you know same weekend, same day, basically, that we lost Memphis. We also got Malin suffering a knee injury. It seems that they have to wait until January until they can fully assess how long he's going to be out for. Um, he would be the natural successor to Memphis up front, and he's the best option to replace him. But having them two out would be a, a disaster because I think Malin's... He's very hard to deal with for defenders. He's he's pacey. He's, he's a basically a bully. He's not very big or as strong as Memphis, but he seems to be able to shrug defenders off and cause mayhem in the box. And he can score from anywhere, just like Memphis can. And the yeah, two are very very similar. I think that Malin has a bit more pace than Memphis. Um, so yeah, I would have said that he would have been the perfect option to replace him. It's just we just need to wait and see how bad his injury is. The hope is that he can be back maybe one or two months before the end of the season, then that gives them enough time to find some form before the championships. So, um, now let's get on to sort of our, our choices, Mike. There are still some outside shouts we'll come on to in a minute. Uh, but are you pinning your hopes on Marlon being fit for Euro 2020? There's no hope of Memphis Depay making it. Um, I'm assuming then you don't want to go for a Luke de Jong type striker. So is your t- choice Marlon? Uh, my my choice would be, and I'm, I'm sure you want to talk about him as well, Mike, is uh, Myron Bawadi, the RZ striker, who's, God, I've lost count the amount of goals and assists he's got. He's easily into double figures um, for both this season in the Europa League and the Eredivisie Dutch Cup. He is very similar to Depay. Uh, same with Marlon, which you just analysed really well there just then. I think Bawadu is the choice because it's a bit of an unknown quantity. A lot of teams won't know really how to deal with him. And I'm, I'm sure that he's not ready, ready yet for that stage. But I think he's the best option at this point to continue what Koeman has been doing. I think that if he gets a chance in March, he adapt, he'll adapt really well. Because that's what he's been doing so far. He's been growing so quickly. His development's been so rapid that I think he'll fit in to the system under Koeman and it, it might be a bit unreal for him to have gone from from almost nothing, a, a backup Eredivisie striker to, you know, a first choice Netherlands striker all in one season. But it's possible. We've seen it with Matthijs de Ligt. Why not? He would be my choice. How about you? Yeah, um, if Malin's not fit, then the obvious choice is Bordeaux. Um, I think that he's had an absolutely fantastic season so far. And we saw him make his debut in the last international period and he was great off the bench he caused Estonia loads of problems got his goal um, he looks like if you're looking for a player that's going to have the most goals and the most confidence heading into the European Championships it's going to be Boadu he's already on 17 and 12 assists this season um, he's been in great form for Braze so he can do it in the Europa League as well so he's he's scored against all big three and everyone's PSV Ajax and Feyenoord this season so he's a big game player and I don't see why he can't be dropped into the, the Netherlands squad he's He'd definitely be in the squad for me right now if you had to pick it. Even if uh, Malin and Memphis were fit, I'd still take Bordeaux as well because he is, what you say, an unknown quantity. He could just be a superstar. Um, I know he gets a bit of criticism for uh, the amount of chances that he misses, but if he scores goals, he can miss a few as well. He always seems to be on the, the score sheet. So, yeah, he's just uh, an outside pick at the moment, but he's definitely one now to have in that squad because of the unpredictability. And he's just fresh. He's, he's useful. He's not scared of anything. He's pacey, he's got strength, he's got everything that you know, the Netherlands need to even score the header. He's just not the biggest, but he can score his head as well. So yeah, he'd be... If Malin and Memphis aren't fit, I would start Boadu definitely up front because having somebody like Boadu next to Bergvine and Promise that's free, very fluid, speedy, tricky attackers that will cause defences mayhem. 
I think the point I'm trying to make about Buadu over Marlon even, even if Marlon is fit, is that Marlon's still got to recover from whatever injury he does have. And he may well be comfortably fit for the tournament, but will he be fit for the March matches? Can he have a good run of form with PSV until that point? That's where my doubt is. And I think that Buadu has now got that chance. If, if Kuman thinks wisely about this, and I'm, I'm sure he is, and can get in touch with Buadu and say, oh, you know, I need you to be training this way, he has to talk to him and says, I want you to be doing this, this and this before a tournament. He can plan out how he sees him to be fitting in his system. And I just think that that will give him the best chance of um, playing as best he can with the Netherlands. I have my doubts with Boadi. I'm not I'm going to admit. I didn't think he was as special as he, we've seen this season. I can see it now. I think before, I always thought it was something a bit missing from his game. He's a little bit too one-dimensional. On the flip side, I'm sure that was because at the time he was playing on the left wing rather than as an out and out striker. I couldn't quite see where he, he, he was getting special talent from, but now I can. He's got a bit of everything, hasn't he? Um, a very good striker. I think outside picks, there's another one who's sort of um, st just starting to come into our, our attention. Uh, we've been looking at him in the youth, youth ranks with the Netherlands, but Joshua Zerkze, the Bayern Munich striker. He has had two goals in two substitute appearances for the German Giants. Can he suddenly have a run in the Bundesliga with one of the biggest teams in the world and make it to the tournament? Stranger things have definitely happened. Um, and if he can continue his form, if he gets some actual minutes, he's only been given a couple off the bench, so you can't really see how you're doing, say, if... Lewandowski got injured and Zerksy started a match. You want to see him making an impact then. Um, but yeah, he's had a sensational start to his, his Bundesliga career. And it's even more surprising because he's not actually been doing that well for the reserve side uh, so far this season. I don't think he's even scored for them um, since something like 12 or 14 games. Um, but he was given the chance by Bayern Munich. They obviously rate him very highly. And he scored two goals and two games off the bench. If he can continue that after the winter break, then yeah, um, he definitely becomes an option for Cumin because if you can do it in the Bayern Munich side then you can do it for Netherlands so yeah I'm excited to see his development over the next few months and see if he can keep it up and yeah he's definitely an outside pick at the moment I think that there's others ahead of him at the moment but if you're scoring goals regularly for Bayern Munich you definitely become an option for, for Cumin. So Mike my final question to you is if you were going to pick three strikers for the Netherlands squad that's what Koeman's been choosing so far, three strikers. Who would they be? And who would your first choice be to play um, in the tournament? So if I was going to pick three that are centre forwards, because I think that Koeman will also possibly use Ryan Babel, which nobody wants to see, but he's done it before. Ryan Babel through the middle. Um, he's not having a great season for Gattas, right? His performance for Netherlands hasn't been that great. But I think he's one of the players that Koeman's going to Definitely choose and probably start on hopefully the left wing, um, not for the middle, because I'd go with Malin if he's fit, um, as long as he's back a couple of months for the end of the season. But I do, and I think the third one will be Luke De Jong just as an impact sub off the bench. I'd love it if it was Xerxes, but it's going to take a lot of goals and a lot of chances, which he might not get. So I'd go with Malin, Bordu, and Luke De Jong. And if Malin's not 100% scoring goals and fit, and I'll start with Bordeaux doing that first game. Intriguing. Um, there's so much time yet to go before a tournament and our opinions may yet change again. But if you're enjoying this kind of um, discussion with us, please let us know in the comments. Let us know on Twitter what you're thinking. Um, and also, yeah, if you enjoy this kind of content, give us a like and we'll produce many more for the other men parts of the squad before a tournament. Let us know your thoughts.